during the angiosperm life cycle, the sporophyte produces two types of spores, microspores and megaspores. The microspores give rise to male gametophytes and megaspore give rise to female gametophyte. These gametophytes develop within the sporophytic tissues which are the sexual organs of the flower. The life of pollen or microspore undergoes three distinct phases. The first one is its development inside the anther which is the male sporophytic tissue through the process called as microsporogenesis. The second phase in which it travels to compatible stigma with the help of vector, the process called as pollination. And third final stage where it rapidly divides to form male gametes, the process called as microgametogenesis and liberates its male cell inside the female sporophytic tissue to fuse with the egg, the process called fertilization. In this module, we will study microsporogenesis and the development of male gametophyte in detail. Pollination and fertilization has already been dealt in detail in other modules. The development of microspores of pollen in the male sporophytic tissue that is anther is called as microsporogenesis. The male sporophytic tissue comprises of anther connected with filament by a connective. The whole structure is called as stamen. The development of microspore begins from undifferentiated group of cells called as archisporial cells. These cells divide periclinally to form primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell giving rise to sporogenous cells within the structure and parietal cells towards the periphery. The sporogenous cells form microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells and later divide by meiosis to form haploid microspores or pollens. Each microspore mother cell forms four haploid microspores or pollens after meiotic division. The four haploid microspores are closely associated with each other in a group due to callose deposition between them. They can be arranged in various types like tetrahedral, isobilateral, linear, inverted or decasset, tetra-shaped arrangement. In Aristolochia elegans, all the five types of microspore tetrads are found. On maturity, these microspores get separated out by the activity of the enzyme callase, which disintegrates the callose present in pollen tetrad. But in some plants of family Asclepidaceae, as in Calotropis procera and Orchidaceae like orchids, the spores remain together in a single mass called pollinium. The pollinium occurs in pair forming balloon like structures. These structures are called pollinia. Each pollinium consists of stalk called corpusculum, a disc like cordicle and two pollinia which carry mass of pollen grains. On the other hand, the parietal cells divide to form layers of cells at the periphery of anther which comprises of an epidermis followed by an endothecium, two to three middle layers and innermost tepetum. The endothecium consists of radially elongated cells which possess fibrous bands. These are hygroscopic that is moisture absorbing in nature and help in splitting of anthers to release spores. The innermost layer tepetum plays a very important role in pollen development. It supplies metabolic substrates and nutrients required for the growth and development of spores. Also, it provides sporopollenin precursors for the formation of exine which outlines the pollen structure and provides a coating of recognition substances on the pollen surface specific of the sporophyte which helps in recognition of compatible stigma. The sporopollenin 
is a complex waterproofing substance which allows the pollen to survive under favorable conditions and to be carried by wind, water or biological agents without undergoing damage. Microgametogenesis comprises of events that lead to the development of male gametes within the microspores. This phase of development begins with the expansion of microspore with formation of a large vacuole. The vacuolation leads to the displacement of the microspore nucleus to an eccentric position against the microspore wall. In this position, the nucleus undergoes first mitosis which results in the formation of two unequal haploid cells, a large vegetative cell and a small generative cell. The generative cell gradually detaches from the pollen wall and is engulfed by the vegetative cell forming a unique cell within a cell structure. The engulfed generative cell now divides one more time by mitosis to form two sperms or male nuclei that participates in double fertilization which is a characteristic feature of seed plants. This division can occur before the pollen is shed or within the pollen tube depending on the species. The vegetative cell is responsible for the deposition of inner wall of the pollen grain which is called as intine and supports the growth of pollen tube on germination of the pollen grain. Now let us study about megasporogenesis and development of female gametophyte. In case of development of female gametophyte, the life of ovule or megaspore undergoes two distinct phases referred to as megasporogenesis and megagametogenesis. The female gametophyte, also called as the embryo sac, develops within the ovule, which is found within the ovary. Inside the ovary, each ovule is attached to its inner wall by a slender stalk called funicle. The point of attachment of ovule to its funicle is called hilum. The main body of the ovule is formed by inner central mass that is nucellus which is made of living parenchymata cells. The nucellus provides nutrition to the female gametophyte. In Arocaria and Sexagothia, the nucellus itself projects beyond the open micropyle and receives the pollen grains directly. In some cases of apomixis, where the seeds are produced without fertilization, the cells of the nucellus develop into embryo. The ovule has two distinct ends, a micropyle end and a chalaza end. The micropyle is an opening of ovule during fertilization and the chalaza is the posterior end opposite to the micropylar end. At the exterior side, the nucellus is covered by one or two protective covers called integuments. These integuments arise from the chalazal end. On the basis of number of integuments, the ovule is categorized as unitegmic when only one integument is present. And if the ovule consists of two integuments, it is called bitegmic. Very rarely, Tritegmic with three integuments is present in plants like Asphodelus. In some plants such as Centellum, ategmic that is no integument condition may be present. In the micropylar region of the nucellus, usually a single hypodermal cell gets differentiated from other cells. It is called primary archisporial cell which divides periclinally to form primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell. 
the parietal cell may either remain undivided or undergoes a few periclinal and anticlinal divisions so that the sporogenous cell gets embedded in the nucellar mass. The sporogenous cell now acts as the diploid megaspore mother cell and undergoes meiosis to give rise to four haploid nuclei. On the basis of number of meiotic products that contribute to the formation of the mature female gametophyte and whether cell plate formation occurs after this divisions the angiosperm exhibit three main patterns of megasporogenesis. They are referred to as monosporic, bisporic and tetrasporic. In the monosporic pattern, both meiotic divisions are accompanied by cell plate formation which results in the formation of four megaspores containing one nucleus each. Out of these, Three megaspores which are present at the micropylar end undergo cell death and only one megaspore remains functional. In the bisporic pattern, cell plate is formed after meiosis 1 but not after meiosis 2. This results in the formation of two megaspores with two nuclei in each megaspore. Out of these two, one degenerates and the other remains as functional megaspore. In the tetrasporic pattern, cell plates fail to form after both meiotic divisions, resulting in one megaspore containing four nuclei in all which remains functional. Thus, these three patterns give rise to single functional megaspore that contains one that is monosporic, two that is bisporic or 4 that is tetrasporic meiotic nuclei. Out of these three patterns, the monosporic pattern is the most common form and is represented as polygonum pattern. Female gametophyte is also called as embryo sac. It develops from the functional megaspore. The functional megaspore undergoes one or more rounds of mitosis without cytokinesis resulting in a multinucleate xenocyte. Later, cell walls form around these nuclei resulting in a cellularized female gametophyte. For example, in the polygonum type pattern, a single nucleus undergoes two rounds of mitosis producing a four nucleate cell with two nuclei at each pole. During third mitosis, cell plates form between sister and non-sister nuclei leading to cellularization or cell formation. During this process, two nuclei, one from each pole that is the polar nuclei migrate toward the center of the developing female gametophyte and fuse together to form central cell. These events result in a seven celled structure consisting of three antipodal cells, one central cell, two synergid cells and one egg cell. The monosporic polygonum type of female gametophyte is typically a seven celled structure at maturity. However, this structure may be modified by cell death or cell proliferation events in various species. For example, in Arabidopsis, the antipodal cells undergo cell death immediately before fertilization. Whereas in grasses, for example maize, the antipodal cells proliferate. Whatever may be the case, the two male nuclei which are liberated from the pollen tube fuse with the egg cell and the central cell respectively leading to double fertilization in angiosperm plants. In flowering plants, gametophytes and sporophytes differ morphologically and functionally. The major function of diploid sporophyte generation 
is to produce haploid spores which are the products of meiosis. The spores then undergo cell proliferation and differentiation to develop into gametophytes. The major function of gametophyte generation is to produce haploid gametes. The male gametophyte or pollen grain plays a vital role in plant fertility and crop production through the generation and delivery of the male gametes to the embryo sac for double fertilization. The female gametophyte also represents an essential portion of the plant life cycle facilitating several reproductive processes like pollen tube guidance, fertilization, induction of seed development and maternal control of seed development. The fusion of egg and sperm gave rise to zygote which is the beginning of diploid sporophyte generation thereby completing the life cycle.